Good morning or good afternoon. Welcome to the French Creek second installment for the uh, National Safety Stand-In Week presented by OSHA. On uh, Tuesday, we talked about Fall Protection 101 where we reviewed the basics of you know, the ABCs of fall protection, uh, rescue, uh, standards and so forth. Today, we're gonna take it up a notch. We're now gonna focus on fall protection for fixed ladders. Now, there's been some major changes here recently in regards to OSHA standards where they've given us some dates and we have to go ahead and abide by these. So um, now we're looking at fixed ladders. This is a ladder that's going to be permanently mounted. Uh, hold on a second, my flicker doodle's not working. There we go. This would be a ladder that's permanently mounted. That is one that is not portable. So this does not apply to extension ladders. It does not apply to folding ladders. It has to be permanently mounted to a structure. Now this can be either above grade or uh, ground down. So there's a lot of confusion about this standard. We get a lot of questions here. So I'm gonna to try to clear up some of the uh, main questions that we do get. Anytime your ladder goes above 24 foot above the landing platform or ground, we need to have fall protection. Now everybody I'm sure has seen the cages or the wells. Cages and wells, OSHA is going to slowly work these out. So they are not going to be compliant fall protections, okay? Now the dates we have is if you have an existing fixed ladder, each fixed ladder installed before November 9th of 2018 is equipped with either personal fall arrest system, ladder safety system, cage, or well. So when we talk about personal fall arrest systems, we've got some different options. We've got our lanyards, we have retractable lifelines, we may have a rope grab system, uh, the cage or well, that's gonna be the other ones that we're gonna use. And that's traditionally what we see. Now, if you have a new fixed ladder that you're installing, any ladder put on a building, a tank, tower, whatever, installed after November 19th, 2018, you have to have it equipped with either a personal fall arrest system or ladder safety system. So any new ladders going up right now, the cage or well cannot be the primary fall protection means. Now, if you have a replacement, let's say that you've damaged the ladder, okay, or you're gonna replace it, you're gonna upgrade it, you cannot put a cage back on that, okay, as your primary. You can still have the cage on it, but you must use a personal fall arrest system or a ladder climbing system. So we are now in that time frame. Now the final deadline for all of this is going to be November 18th, 2036. Again, any fixed ladders that we have, we have to use either a personal fall arrest system or we have to use a ladder climbing system, okay? Now keep in mind, there's no requirement to remove the cage or the well, providing it does not interfere with your climbing system, okay? So if you can uh, go ahead and climb up with these lanyards 100% of the time tied off and that cage does not interfere with you, you can leave that cage right on. But we're gonna run into most of the problems I do believe is when you use the cable systems because you're just leaning out, you're gonna pull that cable out and now your back neck is going to touch that cage. So you're probably gonna to wanna to go ahead and scrap that cage out. Okay, so let's go ahead to the next slide. Take a look at this. Let's talk about some definitions really quick. The cage. Well, that right there is gonna be that picture on the right-hand side. We've all seen this. This is on everything from silos to uh, the sides of buildings. You're gonna notice this. The carrier, that's gonna be your track or your cable that your uh, trolley is actually riding on or your, or your uh, rope grab system, your cable grab. We have a fixed ladder. Again, this is attached permanently to a fixed structure. Now, a ship's ladder will not be included in this. Going up a radio antenna, okay, or a tower with your rungs, that will not be included in this. Nor will your manhole steps, okay, inside of a manhole. Now here again, if you feel better about putting a ladder climbing system on there, by all means you definitely can, but it's not included in the standard itself. Ladder climbing system, we're looking at a trolley. We're looking at a cable grab system. We're looking at these lanyards, a retractable lifeline, and we are looking at a full body harness, okay? Now, if you uh, don't know how to put a harness on or what the requirements are, please go back into our video and uh, you know, watch it, Fall Protection 101. It's gonna give you the basics. If you have any questions, please just call into us. Now, one of the things I want you to be aware of is when you are looking for a ladder climbing harness. A lot of people want the front D-ring up here on the chest, okay? Cross your heart styles. That right there is technically a violation of OSHA. And that standard is 1910-140, section D, I-4. That standard says the harness must sustain the employee 
within the system strap configuration without making contact with the employer's, excuse me, the employee's neck or chin area. So if I've got a harness here with a forged D-ring, I'm gonna make contact. That's a violation. OSHA wants to see you with a waist mounted D-ring. You're gonna find it's a lot easier to climb when you put your hips into this and lean back into it. It's gonna disengage your rope grab system or your trolley system. So portable ladders, again, one that can be readily moved. A through ladder is a ladder at the very top you can walk through and a well is going to be an enclosed cage. Now your through ladders, if you look right there at that picture, the yellow ladder, you see that you can actually walk through that ladder. Now, a lot of ladders today, the newer ones are going to spread out at the top. That's gonna to allow you to get a good handhold so you pass through it. That may be ideal for your ladder climbing rail systems and cable systems. But here again, if it's an older ladder, it may be too narrow. You may have a ladder that's maybe 14 inches wide where you cannot get through there. So we need to take a look at some other products to help you access the, uh, the roof or your landing area. And we'll look at those here in just a little bit. Now your ladders, okay, gotta be a minimum clear width of at least 16 inches, okay? So OSHA wants to see a ladder 16 inches. And that is as of today. Uh, we've got to have something going 42 inches above. So if you have a pass through um, here, we want that from the top of the lot, top of the, from the top rung to the uh, top of the ladder pass through of 42 inches. Okay. Now, when you have a section or multiple sections with a landing platform, if you notice right here, this is a more or less a hybrid system. On that picture, you're going to see the cable going up on the first section of the ladder. They may have replaced that ladder. They may have done some modifications to it. So here again, they're in process of complying with this standard. The upper ladder, it has the cage. And if you look really close, you're gonna see another cable system on that. So maybe that cable system allows them to climb without contacting that cage. So you're gonna be good there. Again, we have some more specs right there on this. And uh, if you uh, miss anything here, if you wanna read these slides, this will be on Facebook later today. So you guys go back through this, watch your convenience, stop it so you can uh, read all these details should you need to. The employer must ensure that, uh, you know, these ladders go from the ground to the very top and allow safe access. Remember your ladder should go at least 36 inches or three rungs past your uh, landing platform. Now, yeah, a thing here is dying. Now, ladder safety systems. We get an awful lot of calls on this. How do I know if my ladder is going to hold 5,000 pounds? Well, it doesn't. For fall arrest, we need a 5,000 pound anchorage. For positioning, we need a 3,000 pound anchorage. This is actually a ladder climbing system. So it's not covered by any of the existing standards. What we're gonna do on most of these is we're gonna grab the top two, three, four sections of rail, depending on your manufacturer. And we're gonna build this system and attach it right to those ladder climbing rungs. So now we're spreading that force over this. So just make sure you have a good quality ladder. And I'm gonna highly recommend that you have this at least 3000 pounds, okay? So uh, you know, make sure your ladder's in good condition while you're doing this. Now your ladder's climbing system allows you to climb with both hands free, cannot interfere with this. Remember, we wanna go ahead and have three points of contact. We wanna make sure that we keep our belt buckle between the side rails. So we wanna watch and follow the ladder climbing standards, okay? And just for uh, information, ladder climbing standards are gonna be 1910.29. I should have mentioned that earlier, okay? Now, the connection between the carrier and your rope grab, for example, or cable grab, we wanna make sure that this is within nine inches, okay? That right there is going to be your OSHA standard. You cannot climb or have more than nine inches in it. So that way, if I am climbing up, and let's say I'm dragging this below me, if I was to take a fall, I've got an eight or nine inch fall to it and nine inch past it, that's gonna be my 18 inches. OSHA says no more than 24 inches in a positioning type free fall. So here again, if you use a system from the manufacturers, it's gonna be engineered, we're gonna keep you automatically in compliance, okay? So continue on. Uh, mounting for flexible carriers. Uh, again, your cables, uh, three, four, five ladder rungs are attached to, but to keep that cable nice and taut and keep it from whipping in the wind, we're gonna have these periodic cable 
assemblies, okay? And this is going to hold the cable in place so it's not whipping around. But yeah, when you climb past this, you're gonna pull the cable out, it allows you to get right by it. Whenever you're done, it's gonna slip right back in automatically. Now, how do we test these things? Well, when we test the ladder climbing system, we have to do a 500 pound drop and we have to drop at 18 inches. So here again, if that's something you guys wanna do, make sure that you go ahead and have your ladder rungs really inspected, inspect your system, okay? If you do do that test with the uh, ladder climbing system, chances are you are going to do some damage. If you're just unsure about it, you wanna do that test, switch out the products that you are uh, compromised, such as this rope grab, shock absorber. You will blow this out. So here again, you have to replace all that. Okay, ladder safety devices, okay? Got to have that 500 pound weight again, shall be uh, permit the uh, person to climb and descend without doing a manual move. So here again, now you're climbing up these cable grab systems, they're gonna automatically follow you up. If you take a fall, as soon as you go past it, shock absorber is gonna deploy and it's gonna bite on just like your old fashioned rope grabs would. With the ladder climbing rail system, we have a trolley and we have a stainless steel pole that's gonna bite into that aluminum or the stainless steel and stop you right away. So we got to be activated within two foot after fall occurs or have a descending velocity of no more than seven feet per second, which is all pretty quick. So these units here have all been tested. They all meet the requirements of OSHA. Uh, so there's not a problem there with it. So whenever you're putting one of these systems up, I want you to make sure, just like with all safety equipment, you read and follow all the manufacturer's instructions. We know our products better than anybody else. We know what they can do, how to put them up, how to install them. So follow our instructions. And this is not hard to do, okay, on either one of these systems. So uh, here again, the standard that we're gonna be covering is going to be, the one I'm really focused on today is the new walking working standard, which is 1926-1053-A19, okay? That's gonna be your walking working standards. So your vertical mounting system, here's a quick little picture of one. We have the head assembly, and it's actually mounted here with five U-bolts. The bottom assembly is mounted with three U-bolts. And on that, you can see that we have our rope grab system or cable grab system, I should say, along with our cable guide, okay? Top bracket, the other little close up of it, you can see there's no shock absorber on that system. The shock absorber is actually on the grab itself. Okay, so here again, we're going to bolt this on, going to tighten it, put the shackle and cable on it. We're all good to go. Bottom attachment, we've got a spring mechanism there with like a shackle. So we're going to go ahead and just shackle this cable. We're going to tighten that up, and that spring is going to keep that tension on that cable throughout the years. Okay, now that will go ahead and require some adjustment periodically. So we have to go out there and check it. Uh, I've actually seen these things uh, with probably four feet of slop in. They're just completely shot. So kind of make sure you're maintaining this. That's one of the bad things about the cable systems is it's going to be constantly maintained. You have to put a little bit of time into it. But as far as being cost effective, it is. Uh, and it does meet the requirements, not a problem. Remember, whenever you're doing cables, follow your cabling instructions, okay? You've all heard the term, um, never saddle a dead horse. That means a saddle on your uh, rope grab clip never goes on the dead end, it's always on the live end as is shown right there in the top pictures, okay? Um, here again, make sure if you're using the cable grab system. We have the cable grab being put on the rope with the up arrow pointed up. That way, if you take a fall, it's actually gonna go ahead and lock on. This carabiner here would attach to the waist belt of your D-ring. So as I'm climbing up, it's gonna follow me up and down, take a fall, it locks on really quick, okay? Here again, you take a fall, we wanna make sure we check, we change this out, do a really good cable inspection. And it's probably good practice just to go ahead and replace the entire system. They're not all that much money. So, now our ladder climbing system. Oh, and this cable, that can be either stainless steel or it can be galvanized. Galvanized is gonna be the most popular. Again, stainless steel, you're gonna use this in the food industry. Uh, anywhere there's water, sewage, vapors, chemicals, that type of thing. Here again, you're going to know your application much better than we are. So uh, just make sure you're buying the right product. Okay. 
Now on the rigid rail systems, um, this is actually the, stain, the uh, aluminum one. This is actually an extruded rail and it has a slot here to back. So we can go ahead and we can lo load this slot up with these little nuts. And you have to tell us what size anchor, what size rungs you have. And we have a variety of different anchors or, or uh, brackets for these. So you're gonna go ahead and load this up just like this, put it around your tongue or around your um, rungs. And we're gonna just tighten this up and get it just snug. You don't have to go crazy with it. It's just aluminum, okay? So this goes, you're gonna start this about two foot up. That way, whoa, I'm going the other way here. Now my flicker doodle wants to work. Okay, so start this up about two foot. That way, when you put your trolley on it, you're good to go. And this will extend it out past two foot, okay? So what about if we have a long ladder? Let's say we've got a hundred foot ladder. These rails are typically gonna give in 20 foot sections. So we can go ahead now and put these two rails together but let's face it, it's going to be pretty easy to get these things askew. So what can we do? Have a splice channel, two bolts in there, put it in. We do a 1 16th inch gap to allow for expansion, and that's going to keep everything nice and straight, so you have a nice straight even transfer up to your rail. Now, one of the things that people always ask about, these little notches here. You guys see those little notches? Can you see that? That was actually for the old military spec where they had to have a stop every 12 inches. So if you can imagine the old ones from the 1940s and so forth, they actually were a piece of like two inch pipe and they had a notch every 12 inches. So as they fell, this little roller would actually stop into the, drop into those little notches and stop. We have these in there even though we don't need them because the ladder trolley will actually bite in so quick but they're not needed. But because there's so many specs out there that do require that, we just put them in automatic. So again, this is aluminum rail, uh, pretty darn easy, put up, okay? Nice thing about this is once you get two clamps on it, you can now use this as your fall protection as you're going ahead and putting the rest of the ladder up, okay? So the other style we can use is going to be our stainless steel. And with the stainless steel, of course, we have stainless steel hardware for that. Now with the stainless steel, this is just to stamp it. Okay, and again, we have these stops in every 20, every 12 inches, but we're gonna now need to know exactly where your ladder rungs are because we're gonna now punch holes in this. So if you just tell us that the ladder rungs are actually 12 inches on center and they're 12 and a half, this thing gonna work for you. So you need to give us some really good dimensions. In regards to all this, whenever you order this, please call in, talk to your distributor, call in, talk to us. Uh, we will give you the questions, the answers, the, you know, whatever you need to go ahead and do this, okay? But this here is going to be your stainless steel system. Now, on either one of these units, we have what we call the trolley. This is going to be slid on the, uh, the uh, rails. And with the carabiner, goes again to your front D-ring on your harness, okay? Now, you want to make sure that these up arrows are pointing up. So when you're actually pulling and climbing, you're pulling this cog or this cam out. This stainless steel cam right there, can you guys see this okay? Okay, highly serrated. So when you take a fall, you're gonna force that cam into that rail and it's gonna bite on real quick. So that's gonna be your final stop. Now, if you don't want this to come off the top, you can always put a stop bolt up there. If you wanna have it come off the top, that's up to you. But here again, these are questions that your distributor and French Creek are gonna ask you what to do. Okay, what, what you're looking for. So we can help you get the right system that you actually need. Uh, does anybody have any questions so far? No questions? I'm doing good, everybody? Everybody's happy? Okay. We got one. First of all, do I know the person asking the questions? Okay. Uh, so Mark Roberts from the chat is asking, if you have cables on your ladders, do you have to use cable grabs or can you still use a climbing lanyard? You can still use a climbing lane, okay? Uh, here again, OSHA is not telling you exactly what to do. They're just giving us these dates. Now, if you have the cable on it or even the rail system, by all means, that's probably gonna be your easy, easy way to do it. But let's say that you go out there and you forgot your cable grab today. By all means, you can use your dual leg lanyards attached to your back D-ring. Go ahead and climb this like you normally would, okay? One at a time, making sure you have 100% fall protection, 
okay? Uh, or if you have a rope grab system, you can do that. Have the rope grab hanging be beside you. Again, no more than a three foot fall under your rope grabs or three foot long leaners. So if you're climbing above it, you take a fall. It's a three foot fall to it, three foot past it, six foot total fall distance requirement for motion. You may even have a retractable lifeline hanging above your ladder, okay? This now goes to the back D-ring. So now as you're climbing up, it's automatically retracting. Take a fall, it's gonna catch you right away. Shock is over here. So here again, OSHA is going to give you a bunch of different options that you can use. So figure out what's best for you, your people, based on your needs, okay? And again, your retractable lifelines, if you're gonna be in a food service, you may want um, stainless steel. If you're working around electric, you may wanna have a, uh, you know, the Technora rope in it. So here again, talk to us, talk to your distributor. We all want you guys to get the right product, okay? So your limitations. On the cable system, well, I'm gonna recommend you have one person on that at a time, clear up to the very top. Problem is, if you have two people on here, if somebody falls, you could shake that cable. You could actually knock that other person off balance, and now they can also take a fall also. With the rigid rail systems, a little bit better. But here again, I'm gonna say no, not more than one person per 20 foot section. So make sure you're always on the same uh, different section of the rail system, okay? Um, here again, before we exit our ladder, we need to have a point that we can tie off to, okay? Now, this may be something as simple as just putting an anchor up there. So I get to my top, I can now take my lanyard here, tie off, and I can disconnect from my ladder, and I can get onto my roof, okay? But we're going to need an anchor point. Now, in the past, we found that a lot of customers have a hard time putting that up there. They just really don't know what to do, okay? Maybe they're working on a fiberglass uh, grate up there. That's the only place they can tie off to. So French Creek has come up with this, what we call an anchor pole. And this is, here again, on the picture, you can see we have the three U-bolts, um, and this pipe goes up above the ladder, just as it's shown, off to the side. So now you come up to the top, you grab your lanyard, tie this into it, just like this. Now we can get off our cable system or a ladder climbing system, and we can go ahead and pass on through, okay? So here again, just little items to make your transition a lot safer. So boys and girls, remember, we have those dates, okay? And we are well within those dates now. So this is something that we should be looking into. Uh, let's face it, there's all kinds of refineries out there, all kinds of food processing. Uh, you may have a facility with 100 plus ladders on it. If you wait till 2036, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So what I'm gonna recommend you doing is start building this into your systems right now, step by step. We're gonna do these three ladders this year, these four ladders next year. Start easing this in. Like I said, this is not hard to put up, pretty easy to do. So any other questions? There you see, like I said, this is pretty easy to understand, okay? It's just basically, seeing what you got and going ahead and build it. Uh, I'm gonna welcome you guys to visit our website often for the most up-to-date information on uh, you know, the OSHA standards, uh, product technical specifications, industry blogs. We have a lot of new videos on our websites. Uh, we're gonna update you on new products and so forth. Uh, like I said, please feel free to go ahead and uh, go back and look at that webinar we did there on, uh, what was it, Tuesday, I guess it was. Uh, Fall Protection 101. Now on Thursday, uh, we're going to have another trader. Uh, his name is going to be Aaron Hicks. He will be actually uh, performing the uh, confined space presentation that we're going to do. So um, again, we're going to have the uh, website open here, the webinar open for a little bit if anybody has any questions. But if not, I want to thank you guys for participating in this. Thank you for taking an active part in OSHA's uh, 2022 safety standout. Thank you. Oh, we do have a question. It's a question. Uh, the walk through ladder to offset the rail system to allow passing through at the top. Uh, great question. Uh, can we, if we have a ladder, it's fairly narrow, can we not put the rail or the uh, climbing system right in the center? Uh, we have done that off to the side a little bit where now you're going to be tying off to your hip D rings. This is yeah, hip D rings right here. It is going to be a little harder. To, opt to use because you are going to be fighting this a little bit, but I know that there are people that use it like that. 
Um, the system itself was actually designed for the center. Uh, at one time, there was actually um, a company that actually had it out in about a 30 degree angle to, to make it a little bit easier. But if you want to do that, go ahead. Not really a problem. Okay, again, everybody. Oh, one more. Oh, one Sorry. more. Like, uh, what do you do if you have a hatch? If you're coming in, like inside, of, if you're inside of a tank and there's a hatch at the top of your ladder. Okay, great. If we have a hatch, let's say we're going to go ground down or up through this hatch, we actually have a removable extension. So let's say it's a city manhole. Okay, we're going to pop that manhole, do all of our confined entry checks. And rather than trying to crawl, crawl down into there, we're going to grab this. Basically, it's a, uh, I think it's like 42 inches, and it's going to have one of these splice bars on it. It's also going to have another little reinforcement bar in it. So just drop this into your existing ladder rungs or ladder trolley, ladder cable system. Not your ladder cable, I'm getting all screwed up here in my terms. Drop it into your normal rail system, and now you can tie right off to that, go on down. Likewise, going up through, you can always hook that onto your harness. Go ahead and walk up, get up to the very top. You're still tied off to your trolley. Grab that, stick it up, and now you can walk out through. Okay. Got one more question, Blaine. Where do you distinguish a self-built ladder versus self-built stairs? Okay, OSHA's going to talk about that in the uh, ladder standard, 1926, uh, 1053. If it is homemade built, uh, I'm really going to caution you on that, okay? Uh, now, if it's welded, not really a problem. Just make sure you have a good certified welder. Rung's got to be at least three quarters of an inch diameter. But if you got just a, a nailed together ladder, and I do see these, I'm sure you guys have all seen them on job sites, you really got to watch what you're doing with these things because the strength probably isn't there. It's not a true engineered system. So, um, but yeah, your ladders, permanently installed, for the most part, it'd be straight up and down. Your stairs are going to be at an angle. Okay. Now, depending on the angle, it could be considered a ship stairs, which could be very, very steep, or it could be just a normal ladder okay, or staircase. Does the uh, material that my ladder is made out of limit which system I can use on it? No, we have this approved for, and we've done testing on this, on steel ladders, on aluminum ladders. And here again, now with aluminum, you're going to have a larger diameter or larger cross section of your rungs. We've also tested this on fiberglass ladders. But here again, if you have any questions, the best thing to do is send in your ladder specs. We'll have our engineers take a look at it, and we'll go ahead and say yes or no on that. Give you some guides. But at the end of the day, it's your ladder. It's your application. We're going to give you guides. Anything else? Again, thanks for participating. I hope to see you guys on uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Thanks. See you next year.